Christmas everyone. Well, here we are again, another gorgeous day, another day uh, of isolation. So we're gonna do uh, 30 minutes or so training today. Let's start with the warm up. Yeah, jump. Checking in with the body. New shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, flexible ankles. Plus the arm. Some. And arms around big circles. And back. Deliberately get your torso muscles activated. Get across and up. Use your chest, lower back, chest, upper back, chest, center. Shoulder stretch. Over. And change. To the side. Other side. And forward. And hips forward. Circle round. Then good stretch. Even if you just do this warm up stretch, do something. You don't have to train like a crazy person, but you do have to move your body every day. Other side. Make sure your feet are parallel. And still though, pay attention to your technique all the time. You don't have to go full power, but you do have to be aware that uh, sloppy technique leads to, very quickly leads to bad habits. Always be purposeful in your training, especially now. And change. Wider she can jump. Other side. So as usual, you can see where the rabbits have all done their business. But today we have some blossoms on the ground. Very nice. Okay, go jump. Get together. Needless to say, I'm not going to sit down. <laughs> and knee bends. Knees round. Hips round. And then head forward and back. And side to side. Twist. Eastern of your stairs, stretch up and relax. Yes, you can go here. Yes, hey, okay, Taiso Wadi. Zing, because that's come right there. Okay, let's just do my giddy, just to warm up. Yeah, make this one solid. Gather everything to your center. Yeah, gather everything. Yeah. Notice if you start wobbling, why you wobble. Okay, it's not because you don't have good balance, it's because you're not isolating the right thing. Squeeze on the inside, some. She. Keep these to referencing. Go. So your upper right, upper left, lower right, lower left. All converge. She. Go. Look. Shit. Hatch. And humpash. Change legs. Same thing. Immediately you want to go on. This inside here, yeah. yeah, otherwise, we might find ourselves doing this. Some more, she remember closing your armpits also uh, makes you more compact, Go. which is a good thing anyway, but it also brings your consciousness more to the center. Rock, you want something drifting off, ah, unless you're testing the center, yeah, that's a different thing. Hey, hunter, gakazuki timing. Pull this back while the kick goes out, 
As the kick lands, Gyaku says, Squeeze, knee. Some bring it right in touch. Chi. Go. Look. Chi. Ha. Chi. Ke. Je. Yes. Hantai. Hui, Gyaku says, Chi. Chi. Some govern the movement. Of course, by your centre, but I mean, I don't mean that just as a. A convenient phrase draw things up literally have the feeling of sending it out from here and sitting down from here not bringing your hand back your foot down and your hand out because unless you're a talented athlete you uh, you'll have a, a little mix a talented athlete will have the same thing but they can disguise it <laughs> which is not fair go look uh, yeah, yes. Okay, let's move back a bit. Hopefully you can get at least three steps in. Um, if not, that's okay. I'm gonna do four. Exactly the same, but I'm gonna leave this hand as we drive forward. So again, I'll face you each time. And uh, the next four, you're going to work on continually going forward in your center, okay? Continuous center movement. Here, yeah, forward, forward. Yeah, forward, and center, forward. Some forward, forward, she yeah, forward, forward. All right? The next one, maintain that forward movement. And of course, the forward movement is on the same line, but also um, try and squeeze everything up to the center, like before, almost bumping there. Now, if you don't, if you go for the bump and you don't move forward, you will end up bumping. But if you go for the bump and go forward, your center will take over and dominate and not allow you to be awkward. So I'm gonna squeeze up as much as I can, but I'm not gonna lose going forward. Four more. Yeah. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Okay, hope that felt about right for you. Right now we're going to add, we're going to move on to um, Herr Nidan today. <clears throat> so we'll add the Gyakahami, but first of all, we need to um, do what we do with all Kihon, and with all training for that matter, is to exaggerate. So a full size Zenkutu. Now you're going to twist. So I'm not Mirimish now, I'm going to do the same as you. My right arm, your right arm. Left body, clockwise, anti clockwise. Clockwise, or for the Americans, <laughs> counterclockwise. Okay, turn your body clockwise. It's an exaggeration, don't worry about it. Turn it anti clockwise knee and back. So you're going to bring your stance back, I don't know, three, four, five inches, uh, between five and ten centimeters. It's just, uh, but, 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 very, very important. Don't bring your foot back because you're supposed to. Bring your foot back because your torso and hips leave you no choice. So you have your fully extended Gyakazuki. When you turn to Gyakohami, you have to accommodate that. So if that goes back early, it's fake. So don't do this. It's totally fake. Be here. Oh, that timing. Bring it back again. From Gyakazuki. Yoi. Oh, and back. Let's do this together. Yoi. Clockwise. Hitch. Counterclockwise. That timing has to be crisp, and it can only be crisp if it's done together. Return your foot. I'm doing about five or six inches here. Yoy, clockwise. Yoy. Now, as you go counterclockwise towards your left, your feeling is forward. Yeah. So even though that foot goes back, the feeling is forward. Use your imagination. Return. Yoy, clockwise. Go. Gosh. Go. Uh, let's bring it back. Yo, shitch, hard back, yo, clockwise, curl, yes, and let's change legs. So you got that idea? Exaggerate, exaggerate. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're exaggerating the principle, um, you are, you know, in a way, programming your body. Yeah, trust me, when the intention is different, you want to have that programming, and it won't come out as big and exaggerated as this. It'll come out smaller and more subtle. Gyakuzuki is there. So now I'm going to turn my body anti-clockwise. Yoi. Right there. 
not pulling back so much as drawing in. So use this, draw, draw your hand in. That's the feel, draw it in. So it's really, I mean, completely seamless. You can't do this and then this. You can't do this and then this. I, I mean, it's, uh, that's really, really bad. So take your time. Your yeah. hit, yeah. And return, a good six inches of movement for me. I'm fully extended. I'm in shawmen, but maybe even a little bit gyakuhami here, it doesn't matter. From here, that's how I want to finish my gyakuzuki. And remember, unless I free things up, or unless I prep things with my body, if I go with my arm, look, I'm going to go further gyakuhami, and I'm just going to be struggling with my arm, which is not the lesson at all. The lesson is, use your body, manipulate your limbs. Yo. Now you're going to pull back super strong. Hitch! Can your stance handle it? So it brings me to two points, so let's... Um, Go this same direction but you can see the other leg a bit better hopefully you can see my left foot so here i am extended in gyakuzuki a fully extended zenku stretch full size for me this is full size you're a bit of anti-clockwise now if you're off or if you're too much shoulders or you don't have the right structure several things could happen your backside could go out of course but what i'm concerned with now is the stance the back foot we end up doing this. See how that's twisted out? Kids do that because they're very flexible and they don't really have the muscle connection uh, programming that we want. This is your power leg. It's not your uh, moving leg, so it must be the power leg. There's one or the other. So prepare here. Grip the floor with that leg. Yes. So you're testing your stance. Now, that's really strong on the inside. If I let it go like that, the inside is lost. Okay? From the front, Oi, turn that body. Hitch! Well, I couldn't handle it. So if you back off on your rotation in order to give your stance a break, you're in the wrong direction. You need to push that stance, and um, basically that's what Heian Nidan is all about. Consolidating your stance, testing your stance. Testing being the operative word. So let's test that stance. I'll come back so you can see my feet. Yakuzuki. Oi, a little bit anti-clockwise. Hitch! So as much as I'm twisting here, that angle and that direction is exactly the same as it would be if I were in Shawman. If that goes out a little bit, yeah, I'm done for. Okay, ready? Yo, some. See, Yakuzuki. Yo, go. Rock, Yakuzuki. Back foot doesn't move at all. You get a little bit more work on the inside. That's all that does. Yo, shit. Now, if I stay here and I change my legs, there should be no difference in the, the alignment of the upper body. Hard zinkers. Yo, I cut. Yo, yo, itch. Yeah, make it bigger. Yo, chum. Chi, yo, go. Dog. Okay, let's go from here. Yo, itch. Hard. Don't go from here. It's a shortcut. I nearly did it myself. Start from here so you get the idea of moving this limb or unlocking this limb or prepping this limb from your body Yo, cut. Yeah. so let's back off a touch we'll try our four steps may as well go from here turn your body counterclockwise your hitch now your backside's underneath get the gyakuzuki your clockwise shit you got that squeeze in there drive with this leg get your center four shit yes your go now you've got a spring in your whole body. Is it going to pop out? It's another test. Keep this one in. Remember we were doing this, these drills the other day, combining the cross body diagonal. Hopefully my arm didn't pop out there. So let's check yours. Let's go again. Four more. Let's start off with the uh, right leg forward on this. Yo, hitch, knee. Yo, some. She's too exaggerate. Yo, go. Look. Yo, shit. Ha. Shh. Okay. Still exaggerating everything. Exaggerate the good things. Concentrate on the good things. And then, uh, if they are the right thing, the bad things will sort of melt away. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Through my own training. Uh, my own uh, my own work of course you become a little bit in your own world and one of the paradoxical things about this lockdown is that we see a lot of what other people are doing 
makes you think, makes you question yourself. Now, um, we have to be careful in some things. Uh, bringing these hands here for the first movement, you have to ask yourself why, and you have to ask yourself if that represents the, uh, the ideal form. From here, tends to be more direct. If there is a little bit of hang back, then it's just a bit of softness from the arms prepping. To be too specific here will make your, especially if you're, you know, eighth cue going for seventh cue, or if you're an instructor, you have to be careful of those people because they're going to copy the easy stuff. And it's easy to put your hands here, but it's really hard to get the timing here. So start off just by manipulating your arms here. Now we're only gonna drop down and send out. Drop down, send out. Itch. Same on the other side. Drop down, send out. Yeah. Same on the other side. Some. All right, to the other side. She. Yes. Now I'm going straight down. So if I'm in uh, Hachiji Dutch, uh, my, my Hachiji Dutch is kind of almost parallel. I don't like to go too much. A, a true figure of eight, Japanese figure of eight, you know, it's written like this. It's really, it's really quite out. I don't know about that. It's too much. Okay, so Heiko Dutch, parallel feet. It's a bit too restrictive. Um, Hachiji Dutch is just naturally out. Remember, you'll go wider than that when you go longer. Well, that's a function of the length of the stance rather than the foot needing to be at a specific angle. So be careful. Now, if you do have that though, it can be good training because if you're a little bit parallel, you don't have to do anything with that foot. And if you don't have to do anything with that foot, sorry to ramble, you, uh, you end up not using, for example, I want to use my right body. So if I stick out my right toe, oh, I can draw it in, or I'm obliged to draw it in with this. So boom, this whole side becomes much more engaged in here. What I don't want to do is do this and this and then fiddle around with my feet. So let's allow that a little bit more. I'm going a bit more out in Hachichi Dash than I would normally do. I'm going to try and link my right tip of my right toe to my right body, my right arm. Yeah, yeah. left foot sticking, I'm going to bring it in. Some, see it's hard. Go, go. Now try and link it all here. Tip of my left hand, tip of my left toe. Chich, yush, linked by the center. Hach, ka, yush, yeah, yeah, some, see, oh, good, oh, now don't go backwards. So one of my things there, I was working on this and it started to get, well, I would say it started to get quite, uh, quite strong. So my arm going up by its own accord meant this power plus this was too much. So what I have to do now is not lose this power, not go back to being safe and creeping my foot round then going with my arm in a safe way. In fact, doing that even hurts the shoulder a little bit. You know, if you're gonna do this as a backward movement, you've got to twist that wrist, then you can do it. But if the wrist is flat, then it's going up rather than back. And remember, if you're here and you're throwing a punch right here, oh, just going straight up will block that punch. You don't have to go up and out. So if you're here, you're gonna clip me here, oh, straight up, will naturally lead to that block. This is for punching here or for snapping the wrist this way. This is for this direction, either here or here. Sorry, that looks like a rude gesture. <laughs> Boom, okay. Don't straight up, not back. You can see the difference. The energy is different from here, straight up. Don't. That will both block, glancing blow, and hit uh, an excellent, excellent hit. So think about that. Get the power. Let's do 10 more. Itch. Yeah. Some. See. Go. Go. Try and involve your toe. Chitch. Hodge. Come on. Yes. Okay, from here, see if we can get a decent stance. Go. Good to that. Now, again, we're on the theme of Hei Nidan, where we're twisting our body a lot, all right? Twist, 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 twist. Now if that knee moves, 
we're simply just not ready okay and uh, <laughs> that's the long and the short of it if we go like this and these knees move then uh, we're, we're not learning the lesson of uh, which is to test our stance that pushes our body round my body's not going independently trying to uh, how can I say try not to upset the stance the stance is doing the work Boom. Boom. of course you have the addition of the technique but the stance is, is moving my body now because we have such a big spring here if we spring back with our shoulder that knee's going to come in and we're going to lose the stance again so we come back like always to the center stance pushes right body springs back by itself left hip tuck under okay yo yo some that's my right leg shit dig it under yo look so you have it here to charge chain sides yeah the other thing is if you go with your arm that arm's going to go perhaps even across there very common yeah <laughs> you get something like this or if you go with your arm there yeah, i've got it i've got it i've got it but you're not moving your body so when you do move your body you realize it was your arm doing it in the first place so check your stance make sure you've got the same thing we did on the other side yeah body sends the arm that way yeah dig it under yo some she yo now when you're in uh, this uh, could be morotuke of a kind could be agiuke could be haiwanuke could be agezuki could be you know like almost a mawashizuki well maybe like a yamazuki type movement yeah these are related in any case what you're not doing is having your body like this now, the idea that your body is totally here when you're this way is nonsensical there is no doubt this side is involved if you're pulling it back you're pulling it back but if you're not pulling it back the body's not going to go back while the arm goes forward that body's in there so we're here so when you see it from the side this arm is not forced to be back against your head it's going to be here more like an agayuke to someone maybe coming at a, an oblique angle or even someone coming from the front you can adapt it because the body is going to be able to adapt but if the body is um how can i say removed from its purpose then you get all sorts of weird things and there's no variables yeah that body twisting is sending that left arm forward yeah dig it under ready don't go back too much natural some chi yo oh look yo shit hot remember each time that leg there yeah yo it's yeah got it yo some chi dig it under yo oh look shit hot yo yeah hey okay Ooh, so those are the two key uh, aspects of, uh, I think we'll all agree, the characteristic movements of Hei Nidan. So you have Bon Ton Ton, Gyakohami, Maigeri, Gyakuzuki. So they're the characteristic movements, but, you know, of course, the Hei Kata don't have their own personalities, really. They have fundamental building blocks, unlike... The, the, the older kata, of course, the teki, basai, etc, 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 they all have their own personalities. The hand kata are not designed for that, so they're not complete in some ways. They are, if you look deeper and deeper, you can find something in anything. But basically, they're building you a foundation. So when you look at these characteristic moves, the gyakuhami, you have to look at that, what foundation they're building. Let's just do one more move, which is uh, not done particularly well, so forgive me. Uh, because the emphasis is wrong. That move is the nukte after the last stop. And the reason the emphasis is wrong is because it's broken down into two parts, which is very, very pedestrian. And you should only do two parts in the 
ultra early stages of learning. One, two. Now, if you see what I did there, it's hopeless in terms of where our karate is going to eventually go because boom, I'm coming towards you and there's no, there's no threat of anything. First of all, if I step towards you, I should be attacking. So should the emphasis be this or should the emphasis be this followed by this? Ask yourself that question. All, almost all of us, I hope, are going to say our emphasis because we're going forward is to attack. So if we're going to attack, we go for that nukte. And as you saw then, if we go for the nukte, I'm guessing that my arm came down in a parry. And the reason it's very, very important to uh, practice this way is because that's exactly what you should be doing in Kumite. If you're here and someone does a gakazuki, you should be hitting them while you're parrying. Someone does a gyakazuki and you block it and then start going, or well, you're going to get hit. So the seeds of excellent kumite strategy and technique are right here in these early kata. So as we go forward, first of all, practice that. Just go for your dead straight nukte. And the problem is with this hand dominating, sometimes, of course, you get beginners doing this. No, go for that straight line. Go for that straight line. Pure straight. Great. If you watch your own camera, maybe you can see, I don't know. But you want to see your nukte, your tips of your finger, your spear hand if you like, straight to the target. No deviation from that. From here, straight to the target. As if by magic, your block is perfect. Why? Because you've linked intention and technique together. And something uh, on a high level starts to happen. Now, um, let's go four of those. Let's go from Sto, straight as possible. Yeah. Back to Sto, straight as possible. Yeah. Back to Sto, some back to Sto. So even on the wrong side, we should be able to do it perfectly because our intention and our, the conscious effort involved in going straight disqualifies fiddling around with the hands. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> Definitely don't want to do that in Kumite. So from here, here, go oh, straight there. Here, some, see, go, 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 chitch, ha, ch. Got it? Let's do a few more of those. Remember, no one's watching. You have to try and be willing to make a right mess of it. But you might get a nice surprise. Okay, you're straight there. Here, go, here, some, see. Oh, oh, rock, chitch, hatch, cut, Okay, so, um, you know, you have to look at what, uh, what possible reason the giants upon whose shoulders we stand put this kind of technique into our kata. It wasn't there because it was just simply a convenient way to have something that looks a bit stronger than simple shto and uh, give a kiai. There were other reasons. Maybe hidden, maybe secret, maybe all the, all the great secrets are hidden in plain sight anyway. So work on that. So let's walk through the kata with me. Let's get it. Here, so I hope you got it just then, yeah? Right, so... If we look at the theme of this kata and the whole uh, aspect of testing your stances, we have to also look at this tricky uh, keage setup. And, uh, you know, on paper it's not that tricky. You know, you move your left foot, you prep your right foot, you bring your right hand on top of the left. When you think about moving your left foot, prepping your right leg, bringing your right hand back, 
these are these should be very very secondary or way down the hierarchical line of dominance and it is a hierarchy this is at the top of the food chain if you like this foot moves because my center needs to look that way so when, when this turns it drags that foot under okay I don't blithely step with this left leg you turn your hip drag that under so now it's almost buckling because it's got all my weight at the same time you turn your left body towards your right hand then you can have a sort of seamlessness to the movement so you look again close up my center wants to look that way I turn my center you could grab hold of your belt if you want turn yourself feel that foot go underneath you can barely hang on to it which is why which is why we do it we want a continuation we don't want to comfortably step here and wait we want it to be part of the compression we might have in kumite where we we literally bottom out we want to turn bottom out which means leads to an instant uh, release so from here we turn it bottoms out leading to the release when it's done a little smoother I'm still going to hold on to my waist because I really want to feel it here turn boom and it comes out with no uh, well there is a lot of effort but the efforts in the preparation that's how we should be in all our in all aspects of our, our lives really the effort should be in the preparation we're always preparing 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 and then if it doesn't happen it doesn't matter because our purpose was not the end goal our purpose was to have a, a, a much more efficient better more functional preparation than anyone else so if we can do that we're ahead of the game you rotate your body and look at if, look at my limbs now they're just doing as they're told I'm not gonna go like this and pull my hand back nature nature don 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 all right so you apply that to the legs as well so let's just do a little a little drill here I'm a bit lumpy where I am maybe you are too so from here turn turn now we can go on the other side yeah let's go to here turn 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 all right so now we're back to here again you could do this for hours if you want turn see that arm move you'll bring my hand back like that it's too much effort i need my effort to be focused here turn okay let's go to here turn 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 yosh then when you do ura regular ura regular you get uh, no sort of confusion because your center is your center whether it's this way or whether it's this way it doesn't make any difference concentrate on the center now try and see if you can get this hand to just come via your right hand comes via your left not to your left as a goal and then off again it's two parts we need to make it continuous but still don't lose this concentrate via and this all right that wasn't good because i was talking from here go down as well i forgot to say that from here go down oh, then you have the basis yeah so from here so bear in mind the, the wrong side if you like i have to concentrate more on the key fundamentals because otherwise i'm going to get distracted by it being the wrong side so i rotate i let this hand come back I let it go via my right arm i bear down yeah okay two more ready yeah ready let's go again some that wasn't good ready okay <laughs> so when you approach all these things our conditions aren't perfect doesn't matter we have to be working on something and we have to be struggling with something we're not struggling you know we're kidding ourselves because you know of course no one's perfect let's go again through the kata looking for those two extra things yeah the rotation into keage the smoothness of our nukte
So things keep cropping up, yeah? One of those things is Morotouke. So when you're here, oh, it's a big test. Um, I mean, I can't overstate it enough, really. No, when you're getting this Uchuke ready, like we did before, body in, body back. You have to do that because you have to program. If you don't program yourself and you're here for the Morotouke, you're not gonna use your left body at all going to be all about the right arm or when you add the left it's going to be all about both arms you pull it here and you're going to get this horrible thing here I mean this is horrible but it's common in some ways this is even worse I mean I don't know who said put your arm there but I just bumped into my own elbow it kind of hurts why would, why would you do that you have to protect your body above all but you have to give it purpose the purpose in stepping forward, we step forward Gakazuki. Now we're stepping forward Urazuki. We change to Morotuzu, Morotuke. That has to be there. Okay, blocking, kidding. Blocking, kidding. It's still all the double moves there. You never use, almost never, almost never. Use both hands, <laughs> maybe if Kagawa sense is kicking, you use both hands to block. But normally, one arm is the block, one arm is the hit. In almost every case. If it's not one arm block, one arm hit, it's both arms hitting. But it's almost, almost never both arms blocking. You're, you're really up against it if you need both hands. Boom, boom, you're gonna go down. One arm blocks, the other one's hitting, one arm blocks, the other arm's hitting. This is how your kumite is. One arm blocking, one arm hitting, etc., etc. So let's practice that, um, and it's very important. Let's go from Zenkuzesh is hard, Kokuzesh is a little easier, because then you can get that body right round and it's there. But when you're in Zenkutsu, you've got to get the elbow sunk deep in. Let's see if you can see. From here, I mean, I'm not uh, exactly a, uh, an overweight person, but if you're overweight, um, you, have, uh, you have different dimensions. And if your belly's here, you know, I mean, I'm not judging you, your arm is going to be here. So don't use that belly and go around it to get the hand here because your goal is to get the hand there. Whoever said your hand has to touch, it's, well, I'd like to have a conversation. It's just wrong, okay? If your belly's there, your arm's here. Don't. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. For me, it's too open. Plus, you know, <laughs> I mean, I want to be very close to convention. So we want to sink it in. For some of us, we'll sink it into here. But if you don't change this structure at all, sink it, sink it, sink it in. Sink it in, yes. Okay, I'm grazing that arm. So conventionally, as a, as a full-time instructor, I want to have that form. But I'm not gonna cheat to get it. I'm gonna do exactly the technique and the intention. The technique is morotuke, which means, you know, obviously it augmented. It doesn't mean stick one hand against the other block. It means it's augmented. Augmented with what? That's where they leave you hanging. Augmented, in my opinion, which is, I challenge you to argue me on this, it's urazuki, okay? So that's not a bad urazuki. If you're big, it's not a bad urazuki, they're not big. My armpits closed is nice, but convention dictate, yes! Mm, I gotta get it in there. What I don't do, of course, is bring that arm over. Definitely not this, okay? So when you're going forward, you're attacking. As you attack, you block, which is what we do all the time in Kumite. So it's a Kumite move. So we're here, get the arm ready for attacking. Yeah. Get the arm ready, knee, some, bomb. And like all double arm blocks, by and large, except if you're in Kokuzashi, of course, or Kibidashi for that matter, by and large, your body's gonna be kakiwakiuke, not to the side. It's gonna be pretty even whenever you use both hands. Same thing. Unlock this, unlock, itch. Unlock, 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 yeah. The reason for the unlocking is, of course, so you prepare really, really quick, but also so your arms are light and therefore malleable. 
you don't want to leave it there and then it's late and then you're going to struggle and you should never struggle in your technique you should strive towards perfection but that's your body fighting itself which is not good it's a different thing unlock unlock this so if you had just this arm boom you had just this arm boom. you're hitting this way you had just uchiuke boom. just uchiuke boom it's here so uh, we've got two crisp clean techniques but remember what you don't do with that uchiuke from here is go like this <laughs> it would be silly so be um be logical about your movements ready unlock yeah go for the hit yeah go for the hit something go for the hit shit yush so you're going for that hit and you happen to get the block because something's there what else uh well we covered it in hand shot then the other thing is the floating arm of the agiuka prep don't do this definitely don't do this Boom. see that float created by your center whoosh whoosh Boom. yeah Watch that again. No, that's the arm. No, that's the hand. You're gonna bump into something. And you're reaching to my shoulder. Mm, send it from below. Push. Get umbra on the other side. Same thing. Soft arm. Soft, soft, soft hit. Also, because you're moving forward, you've got to go from below. From above disaster how many beginners have you seen do that i won't ask how many black belts have you seen do that but i'm sure there's a few shoulders consciousness up struggle awkwardness ungainly undignified you know these are not good things yeah so you just do the opposite dawn from below flowing <laughs> composed and dignified <laughs> so on that note you know, have a stretch, do your push-ups and sit-ups. Um, uh, I've got another class this afternoon, so I'll be doing my thing. But um, stay safe, isolate yourself from everyone, and uh, I'll meet you again online. Okay? Aikyotsuke. Aikyotsuke. Awarimasu.